love to talk about everything horror and in today's video we are going to be reviewing we need to do something now we need to do something is directed by sean king o'grady and it's based on a novella by max booth uh the third this film stars sierra mccormick vanessa shaw pat healy james johns cronin and lizette alexis now this film is about a dysfunctional family that had to take shelter in a bathroom of all places uh, during a crazy storm and during the storm they become trapped and it turns out that our main character may have something to do with it all right you guys let's go ahead and start off with the positives i'd say the performances overall were pretty good sierra mccormick is almost becoming a horror go-to um, she was in American Horror Stories. She's in this now. Um, I think she was in VFW. Um, she's actually becoming well-versed in horror, and it's nice to see her in this. Uh, we have Pat, the return of Pat Healy. Um, I loved him in The Innkeepers, and it's great seeing him here in front of the camera again. Vanessa Shaw from Hocus Pocus fame. Uh, she's in here as well. I think overall, they all get pretty good performances. Uh, Vanessa Shaw plays the mother. She's pretty much the most sane person and the foundation of the family. You feel the most sympathy for her and the son, played by John James Cronin. Um, they're just pretty much innocent bystander. Well, especially the son. He's just an innocent bystander through this whole or ordeal. Um, and then you have Pat Healy's character. Uh, which is like an unhinged alcoholic father crazy throughout the entire movie um, you're almost uh, like okay what's he gonna do now <laughs> he's just one of those types of characters and then our main character Sierra McCormick who plays Melissa um, you're kind of uh, teetering between I don't know what to feel about this person are they bad are they good Especially when you go into her past and her relationship with another character in the film. You're just left wondering, uh, okay, what's what, what's going on here? And another positive for this movie is this is one of those films where it just takes place in one locale. And uh, I thought it was very well done. Uh, these types of films, it's very easy to uh, lose the audience. And I think that... Uh, well, for me, I was able to stay engaged with the films, even though it took place in one location. I'm usually uh, pretty easy to win over with these types of films. I mean, I love Devil. I love Ten Cloverfield Lane. Um, the, those types of movies I'm really into. Um, so uh, it wasn't really that hard to win me over, but I feel like this is one of those types of movies where it's very easy to lose the viewer there are, i think there's enough things that happen in this in this one location that it'll keep the audience engaged i mean what old grady is able to do with this one location he's able to keep the film feeling fresh with uh all these different shots that he's able to do um in such a small area and for this film to have a small budget and still feel like a pretty big horror flick I think is an incredible feat there are some anxiety filled scenes here there's enough gore to go around blood I think the horror in this film is very well done okay now I do have some negatives and they were pretty significant first off the flashbacks kind of felt out of place I don't know why but those scenes felt very ABC family to me <laughs> ABC Family. I don't even think that exists anymore. But it did. Those, those scenes just felt very out of place for what was happening in the film. And I think it was a negative to the film because every time these scenes came around, it was the most anxiety-filled scenes in the movie. And um, it just allowed you to breathe. And I felt like this film needed to be relentless. Another negative for me is that this family felt bit too unbelievable like i couldn't imagine this family existing outside of this world that this film built up most of it is due to pat healy's character but yeah it felt a little bit too much of a stretch for me another negative is that there's way too many unanswered questions 
that, if that is a big thing for you, you are definitely not going to like this movie. For me, I just felt like there was just way too much that was not answered. I didn't want to know exactly what was going on. And then that tied in with the ending. It just didn't stick the landing for me. Um, it just almost felt like a joke at the end. I would have just rather there be a ending that just was a gut punch. But the way it ends, it just felt like, what was the point of all this? <laughs> Overall, you guys, I have to say this film was uh, pretty much um, entertaining in a hellish way. Um, it was uh, one of those films that just, you know, gets your anxiety up a bit, um, makes you feel like shit for a bit. <laughs> I don't know if I would watch this film again. Probably not. Definitely not. But... <laughs> Overall, I think it's worth watching, if anything, for Pat Healy's performance. He's just so <laughs> out there in this movie. You have to check it out. I'm going to give We Need to Do Something three dog licks out of five. Have you seen We Need to Do Something? Let me know what you guys thought of the film in the comments down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it and make sure to subscribe. This is Everything Horror, where we love to talk about everything horror. Take care, peeps.